Welcome back, everyone, to Talking It Out with Bachelor Nation. This week, we are talking to the lovely Danielle Malpe. You know her. She came down to Paradise and hit it off with Michael A. Just as he was about to leave Paradise, it was a Paradise miracle, as they call it. And uh, we're going to get into that, her relationship with Michael and everything she's got going on in her life. And I'm excited for the interview, man. What, what about I'm you? excited as well because we haven't seen uh, Danielle on our screen in quite some time. She has such a beautiful backstory from her relationships in the past, uh, the way that she's worked on herself and grown uh, to working in the hospital during COVID to having her own podcast. I mean, there's so much about Danielle outside of Michael A. and Paradise that I just think that the fans should get to know. Absolutely, absolutely. But we got to hit our hot takes first, man. We you got know how we to. do. So we got I'm, I'm going to kick it over to you so you can start. So I was just thinking about hot takes this week, and I I was reminiscing on a, a fun conversation that I had, but the conversation didn't start off so fun, right? I was dating this lady, and I had one of my friends come over. And, you know, we all have that blabbermouth friend, right? He's a blabbermouth. Okay. And he told, like, not directly to the woman that I was dating, but it was just the three of us hanging out like in the living room. Like we're all into one conversation together. He was like, yeah, Mike, uh, I know you make this much per month. I'm like, oh, bro, and it's, I'm putting like, your oh, business out there. Yeah, just put my business out there. Like, so my my hot take is, <laughs> or my question, I, not a, it's a question. When is the right time in a relationship to tell to talk about finances with your partner? <laughs> that girl's eyes lit up cha-ching like it was just like bro what are you because i you know I, I like i've always been an extremely frugal individual uh and i just live extremely well below my means and i'm like why are you telling my business that's why i don't even tell my mama or my homies you know because of this reason right here and so and not necessarily nothing changed with the lady it's just that's my business and i was just wondering for a hot take i don't personally want to tell my partner, the person I'm dating, how much I make per year and or per month until it's time to merge finances or have a conversation about like debt and things of that nature. But prior to that, I want you to like me for me and not for nothing else. Correct. Well, what, what's the saying? Keep your love life, your finances or something like that private, like from the rest of the world. I, and, I know what you're talking about. I and I feel like that it. goes for anybody that you're dating casually. Like, like if they ask you straight up, if I think you mentioned, we've talked about this off air, that some women have just asked you straight up on what, like first date, second date, how much you make. That's a yeah. huge red flag to me. You know what I mean? That's a huge red flag. I think that I say I laugh and say, how much you make? <laughs> Wait, what you mean? We can talk about it, but you're going to start. Let's go. Uh, right. Right. I'll put it back on them. But no, I think it. there's got to be. You know, you got to reach that level where it's like, OK, this is somebody that I could see myself with. You guys are on the same page. You know, you're talking future. You know, you're maybe you know, thinking of popping the question, things like that. Then, yeah, you have a, a, a conversation about finances. Uh, you talk talk about debt, you know, because that's something I definitely think that's a conversation that you need to have prior to getting married, because I don't think it's fair to, you know, put that on somebody. It's like, hey, guess what? I have, you know, I'm a million dollars in debt. And then they're like, holy Jeez. shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I'm, the, I'm, I'm just throwing out a crazy example, but I, I love definitely my think, fall back down to light. <laughs> it's like a check, serious. please. Um, yeah. But no, I, I just feel like it definitely should happen before. But I think you should determine it should be later on once things are getting serious and you know that she's in it for you correct? And not in it correct. for your money. Because if she said that thing like first date, second date, that's a red flag, then you know what she's after. 100% red flag. And now I want to caveat. I do think that, uh, that a financial conversation should happen in the girlfriend-boyfriend stage. Absolutely. Now, that's fair. does that go as far as to say this is how much I make per year? I'm not saying that. I don't care. I've dated all types of women yeah. and honestly don't care if you make a hundred mil or worth a hundred mil per se because i don't know nobody that makes a hundred mil per year um uh, or you're broke broke ass college student right either way i don't care now the conversation definitely in my opinion should be had that conversation is like okay how do you view money what do you look at and that's more so based on actions and not necessarily their words because they're going to tell you what you need to hear yeah of course but then also debts that conversation to me doesn't say how much do you make per year because to me that's like a yeah that's a personal too question. direct it's, yeah, yeah just, that's too direct that's that doesn't sound good 
at least, right? It doesn't yeah, it's, to, to me now, I I I see you as my future wife. That's yeah. a different conversation. It's like because now I have to. I need to. I need to plan for things. Like yeah. I want to make. Obviously, when I'm married, I'm, we're we're open fully across the board. There's nothing behind closed yeah. doors. I would hope. <laughs> and so at that point in time, I'll tell you these things. But it just was weird because you know I've, I've told you behind closed doors. I've had I've gone on dates with women to where they're like, I catch them when I come back from the bathroom looking at googling my net worth, which is wrong from the start. <laughs> or I've had women like. I have like a military veteran, right? So I have a, a, a platinum card, but then I also have a little USAA card. And they've been like, all right, all right, is your credit card maxed out? Why are you using a, a debit card? Wow. It's just the weirdest of things. And it just makes wow. you like step back. So they're basically judging you based on the type of qu- card you're swiping? Based on the type of a card. <laughs> oh, hell no. Hell based to the, the no. Card. It's just absurd, man. It's just hell like, to damn. The no. But, we here at this dinner. I'm paying for the shit. Right? So all you need to know is I got enough money to afford this. Enjoy the meal. <laughs> yeah, like, and you know the funny thing, bro, is that I drive a 2014 Ford Focus and give absolutely zero care, like zero care. And I think it's just because I think that it's from within, not what's on me, right? It's what's in me, not with, uh, what's Correct. on me. But so many people have a hard time realizing that because we are, especially in our society within America, just we're visual in terms of show me your money show me the material that you have and it's like nah this investment account doing good though yeah you know yeah Yeah, i mean that's the thing like somebody might judge you based on let's say your car right and like think oh he he don't have any money but then you have the you have some of these guys like there's a lot of a lot of them in miami who are just stunned on the weekends by you know buying uh tables and popping bottles Mm -hmm. and yet they're so in debt but you know, everybody think all the women think, oh, this guy, you know, has got all the money. He's living the lifestyle that I want. Like that's attracted to them. And then they realize, oh, shit, you don't got shit. You know, I've had friends ask for money. <laughs> no exaggeration. This isn't even like <laughs> zero exaggeration whatsoever. I've had homies ask for money. And then the very next week they pop in bottles. It's like, bro, it's, <laughs> to me, it's disrespectful. <laughs> Seriously, very disrespectful. It's, it's, it's hella disrespectful to me. I'm like, bro. And then the girls... Or, you know, they're thinking, okay, he he got a little change on him. I want to be like, baby, he ain't got nothing. <laughs> That's what I want to say. <laughs> You're getting back at that friend for, for for diming you out on the on how much money you made. Literally diming me out. You're turning man. it back on him. Literally. What's oh, your hot take? What you got for us? Oh, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to make this show related. Uh, I was a little frustrated um, that there was even a question uh between who this woman should go for. And I'm talking about Victoria Fuller. And now Mm. she's in a predicament with Johnny, who she originally started to feel on the beach. You know, they seem like they had a solid relationship. But then here comes (laughs) the Russian stallion, Alex, from my season, which we talked about him last week. We did. And I'm just, I guess I'm just perplexed because... How many times did she mention that basic once, you know, that she didn't pay attention to him at first, but then I guess he rubbed her head during that little moment. And then all of a sudden that opened well, up the floodgates for her. She wanted to him. pay attention to him, though. She didn't she, pay attention yes, to him. Yes. Yes. But she wanted to. Why? Because that's like her typical guy, right? She's like, you know, every She's, woman and guy has that, right? It's like, oh, that's my type. That's the type of person I go for. And th- he was right up her alley. And me knowing Alex, like, I know he's a good dude. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of guys that look like him and that have everything he has, you know, they're playboys. They're off doing their own thing. And, you know, I get it. They're they're no good for you. But Alex, on the other hand, like, you literally called him the dream guy. He checks off all your boxes. Like, the man is literally a human, human unicorn. All right? Tall, dark, and handsome. Dude is mad smart. Like, People may not know this, but he is really smart. His body built like a a Greek statue. He's charming. He was making you laugh at the date. He's respectful that he didn't want to kiss you in front of Johnny when everybody was back at the beach. He was considerate in that sense. He's ready for marriage. He was was ready for marriage. He's, what, 33. He wants to settle down. And don't get me wrong, but you're considering Johnny. Johnny, no disrespect to you, bro. I don't know you. Um, you know, I actually respect the game because I think he oh. he was charming. Obviously, Johnny's he got, game was a one. 
Yeah, yeah, Johnny's game was A1. Um, but the fact is, the facts are that he's 26. Um, he told you from the jump that he wasn't ready for marriage, and now you're on a show that ends in engagement. Um, and like I said, nothing personal against Johnny. I actually like his vibe. I think he has game. Uh, I like how he played it cool and basically put the ball in her court when she came back and she's like, oh, I'm confused. You know, this guy named Alex. And then Johnny was like, OK, if you want to explore that, go ahead. I'm out. And he pretty much just put it all on her. You know what I'm saying? So I like that because at the end of the day, whatever she decides is going to give you your answer. You know what I'm saying? Like if she goes with Alex, there you go. Like it just wasn't meant to be. And he can walk away, sleep well at night. And if she chooses you, then great. You got what you wanted. And. You know, that's it. You ride off into the sunset. But if Victoria Fuller does not choose Alex and chooses Johnny, I'm sorry. She fumbled the bag. She fumbled the bag. <laughs> straight up. Straight up. Like, you have you have literally everything that you've ever wanted out of a guy in your life. And you, and you go with the younger, you know, not ready. Let's be honest. Like, I don't think he's ready. He, like he may he mature, said he's not ready. He, said he may it. mature and get and walk into his own later on down the line. He may be super successful and like be the catch of the century, but he ain't it right now. Cool. Alex is that guy right now. So if she does not pick Alex, I think he fumbled the bag. Uh, I don't know. Straight up, what do you think? Alex is on paper phenomenal. I don't know him personally, uh, but from what I've seen of Alex, exterior perfect. Perfection for some people's eyes. Not everyone likes, you know, chiseled, but <laughs> uh, they would definitely look at it if he was in a magazine, right? And but Victoria said out of her own mouth, "You look like my ex," and I felt bad for Alex because he said, "I get that a lot. I look like a lot of girls' exes," right? Wow. And I, he was being so genuine. You could just see his his the way that he came across his maneur mannerisms that he was yeah. being genuine in that statement that he looks like he hears that a lot from a lot of women maybe that was it maybe she had a little ptsd right maybe it was that alex ain't got no game because right. he looked did it usher sing about that like you remind me of a girl that i once knew or something like that and like he I couldn't get with her <laughs> yeah i'm gonna start singing it don't get me start singing it. i'm going to usher, usher concert this weekend oh but shit. it's gonna be fun you have a date but but for victoria <laughs> though skip that real quick but Victoria, but, 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 <laughs> but for Victoria though, who are you? You the interviewer? What's going on? You, you interview me, man? What's going on? Man? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm invested in your love life, bro. You know. No, nah, no. Nah, I saw what you did when you uh, subscribed to my new I saw what you put too. But for Victoria, I think maybe she. It might be a little PTSD from her ex and Alex looking like her ex. That's fair, which That's is fair. fair. It might be Alex ain't got no damn game, which is also fair because I don't know him personally. He may not have game. You know him personally, but you don't know him from like the woman's perspective of right. Gotcha. Or it could just be that Victoria may know that when they together, he probably won't get more attention. Or the fourth option D, it could what just be something saying? That one of what us don't know. What are you saying know. there? What are you saying there? I've been in situations to where women don't like, and men too, don't like the, their person to be getting more attention to them though. Oh, I, what, dude, I once dated a woman who told me that she'd rather be with like a dude that's like a six or seven instead of, she was she would actually get upset because we would walk into the room together and we'd both get attention, right? <laughs> yeah. So she'd rather go with a six or a seven and basically all the, the shine be on her. Like, I don't know, that's, that's just weird to me, to be honest, but it screams hey. a little bit of insecurity, not gonna lie. Someone, some would say it's insecurity. Some would say, "Hey, at least they know who they are." Yeah, true. You know, true. it's not not my business. But those are the three options I can think. And then there's a fourth, which is obviously what's in Victoria's head. Uh, I would agree with you though, and say that first off, I'm Johnny watching this back. Oof! Like Oof. when I hear yeah. her say, "Alex, you are every single thing that I want." <laughs> he told. She told him. She's she did like, tell him. He that. meets. He meets all my prerequisites on my checklist yeah, that, had, that so. had a that was a little knife knife to the to the heart right there for johnny for sure but i feel like johnny's so smooth with it man he don't give yeah. a damn i, I, I no, like he plays I like johnny's cool. personality i like his per cool. i like him a lot i want i want to interview him because he just he was g about it like yeah. we've both been in this situation especially we never get to talk about this when you're on the bachelor the bachelorette and there's 33 people or 30 people plus on the first night the first thing you do is just human beings. You're sizing everybody up. It's Absolutely. just period dot. 
Yep. Like, damn, that's a good looking dude right there. Or, or that's a good looking girl right there. Like, he's in the running. Be. She's in the running. Yeah, like, yeah, like he's like, man, he speaks well. He, he's nice. He like he got every single thing going for him, right? Johnny don't give a damn. Johnny don't let it deter his right. mindset. Right. And that right there might just be the thing that Alex doesn't have that Johnny does have, which is, like I said earlier in my hot take, it's not on me. It's within me. Yeah. Yeah. No, listen. I think Johnny, yes, he is that dude where he has confidence. It doesn't matter if he's, you know, when it's him versus Alex, if he's losing in the looks department, the body department, the financial department, like he is secure himself, right? Like he believes that he's that dude. And I like that, right? And I, I, like Alex, it just, I don't know. It just seems like. It's right there. It's like I love. I love that it's you all, it's, for your boy. It's, everything is right there in front of you. Like your life, you could you could just see it right there with him. And I don't know. I don't know. We just don't know, right? We should interview Victoria. What I know of Victoria, when I'm around her, she's normally like she's been portrayed on TV. She's a bit more reserved and quiet. She's definitely fun, and she's definitely a person that listens more than she speaks. So she doesn't really let you into what's going on with her unless you ask her, then she's cool people and she'll tell you. Uh, but I kind of want to get to know about our guest, Danielle. I just want to get to know her more because we haven't seen her in years on our screens. And now we're watching her love unfold. And I want to see about, you know, what does she think about the Johnny situation uh, with Victoria? How's her time with Michael? Does she really like Michael? Uh, does she feel like Michael came on too strong? We just don't know. But I would love to just talk to Danielle and talk it out. Let's bring her in. Danielle, welcome to Talking It Out. How are you today? I'm doing great, Mike. Thanks, guys, for having me. Uh, thank you so much for being thank on. So much, so much to talk here. about with you. <laughs> so, yeah, Danielle, it's going to be fun. Yes, absolutely. So, Danielle, we love the connection that's formed between you and Michael, and we have a oh. ton of questions for you. But before we do that, we want to We want to take it back. We want to take it back. You are on, along with Rachel, the wifey, you're on next season, so uh, you're no stranger to Bachelor Nation. Um, <laughs> talk to us about that. What have you been up to since the last time you were on Bachelor in Paradise, as well as your season of The Bachelor? Well, I appreciate you saying that because I feel like I've been so far removed that people are like, Danielle, who's that? Who's this person? And I'm like, you remember, like, Rachel, she was the Bachelorette. I was on her season. Like, <laughs> <laughs> was um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I'm a nurse. Um, I went right back to the bedside, um, into the NICU and, um, got a bit burned out. So kind of deviated from that for a little bit, started a podcast for, um, primarily women in medicine and those who identify as women, um, and have really just been trying to build a community there uh, to support healthcare workers. Um, but I still work as a nurse. I work in the OR now, and I do some work in aesthetics. So fun side of nursing. No one's gonna die on me. It's great. <laughs> not funny, you can laugh at it. It's, it's like, okay. Not funny. I shouldn't laugh at that at all. Thank you so much for what you do, by the way. First and foremost, yes. seriously, appreciate I appreciate you. that. Thank you. I like genuinely appreciate it. How was being a nurse? during COVID? Mm, great question. Beautiful question. Um, I actually was not working at the bedside during that time, but you had already I, transitioned. yeah, I had already okay. transitioned. Um, but I really tried to use, you know, my platform and my voice, um, and the podcast to, uh, elevate other stories of nurses and doctors that were working through it and just trying to create a space for them to feel supported and to acknowledge, um, their mental health and the, all the trauma that they had they've experienced yeah it's I gotta, an ongoing I gotta, I gotta imagine like during that time you know you didn't have any shortage of 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 stories you know to relate no. to and to help people you know that were in the that were suffering a lot during covid because i can imagine if the people that were on the front lines that you had to yeah. talk to yeah that was a lot um but yeah let's i mean let's talk about uh you know, as far as your dating life, obviously, you know, you were on a dating show, The Bachelor. Um, did you date at all, like in between when you were on the show last? Yeah, uh, very unsuccessfully. Um, but yeah, I dated. <laughs> um, obviously, nothing really stuck. Um, there was a lot of, I feel like self growth and, and things that I still needed to do and work on. And um, 
I know they said it in the show. I just, I think I was at this point where I didn't feel like I was who I actually wanted to meet yet. And that thought really helped me like, okay, well, if I'm not who I want to meet yet, what do I got to do to get there? So Huge. And what did you do? Like, what kind of steps are we talking about here as far as self-growth and development? Therapy. (laughs) Finding yourself um, a great therapist, which, and committing to therapy, um, which is a huge privilege because, I mean, we all know it's not, it's not cheap. It's not readily accessible. Um, And it's not necessarily covered by you know, a lot of insurances. Um, But I had reached a point in my current career where I was like, okay, well, this is something I can afford. I can afford to pay for it out of pocket. Again, huge privilege. Um, But I used that time and I've been seeing a therapist uh, twice a month for a little over a year now. And that's really, really helped me process a lot of things. Those seven letters uh, have helped so many people, especially like what you said about doing the work. Right. Mm -hmm. Caring about it as well. You can't be, you know, with your therapist and they're telling you something. You're just sitting there like a brick wall. Right. You got to like do the work as well. So I love that you said that. What got you to that point? Because that question, when we ask ourselves that question, when we ask most questions that are internal, they're Mm -hmm. breakthrough questions. So what got you to asking yourself, am I the person that I want to date? Was it a friend? Was it a family member? Were you writing down in a journal? Um, I think it was a little combination of both. I had this really special patient that I was taking care of. And, you know, they're asking you all about, like, your dating life. And, you know, she's just one of those very inquisitive patients as I'm putting, like, needles in her face and, and stuff. And I'm like, great, talk me through this. And I had this moment and she was like, well, yeah, like, you can't be, you got to be who you want to meet. And I was like, oh, my God am I who I want to meet? Like she's, she's just this like really spiritual person. She just drops little like knowledge bombs on you. And I'm someone that loves to journal. Um, writing has always been very therapeutic for me. Um, helped me process a lot of stuff, um, and painting as well. Um, but it like that thought just kind of sat with me and lingered. And I was like, okay, well, when I got home that night and I I was getting ready for bed, I pulled out my journal and I just really started thinking about that and like what that looked like for me and how if I wasn't who I wanted to be how do I get there what does that look like what did what did I want in a partner and what did I want to match in that partnership and was there like a I want to say like an aha moment where he's kind of like you felt comfortable enough where it's like you know what I am ready to start dating again like I'm ready to put myself out there and be vulnerable like can you talk to us about like when you felt that during your process? Um, I don't know if there was a specific like moment, but I can tell you I felt a lot of moments in different, you know, dating ships or when you're just starting to like get back dating out there ships. that you're like <laughs> dating ships <laughs> um, where you're like you're purposely trying to find something wrong with someone. And and then you're like, well, if all these people are being wrong, is it these people or is it me? Or like, am I being, am I wanting too much? Am I being too critical? Um, and so those were like other things that I you know, started to discuss with my therapist. But um, I don't know if there's just like really one point where you're like, okay, yeah, I'm ready now. It's uh, like dating and is such a god it's such a learning process for Facts. for anybody you know yeah. you have Facts. all these different life experiences and and they're going to shape you and like who you're attracted to or like what you think you want out of a relationship or what you've been conditioned to want out of a relationship um i want to touch on that right there what do you yeah th- have there ever been a time to where And then I want to get back to The Bachelor. But has there been a time to where, Danielle, you've dated someone and they've literally checked off every single box, but there was something in you that went the opposite way? And if so, what what was the reasoning? So that's that's a that's a tough one, Um, because all 
and this was another thing I really had to work through was my patterns and noticing the type of guy that I was continuing to get into relationships or situationships with. And I started really realizing that those weren't safe, like those weren't viable. I wasn't asking for, I was, I was letting people get away with the bare minimum and thinking it was that I deserved the bare minimum. Um, I've, I've been in a lot of really wrong relationships that, um, I don't think I've ever been, obviously hindsight's twenty twenty. but looking back on the relationships that I have been in, they haven't been good, safe, equal relationships. Right. Like looking back, did you notice like the quote unquote red flags, like hindsight's twenty twenty, like you just mentioned? Like, did you? Oh yeah, you do, but you can make excuses for anything. Let me tell you that. That part. <laughs> that part right there. Wow. Danielle, for our audience, because so many mm-hmm. people listen to this podcast, I want to make sure that they and we, uh, Brian and I, understand fully. When you were talking about some of the patterns, what were those patterns and 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 the aspect of how did you even realize that? Because I think. We all have patterns, but it's the aspect of realizing that pattern. That's Mm -hmm. the only way that we can get through that pattern. So what was that? Um, I think once I realized I would start when I would journal or when I would write out how I was feeling, I was like, man, I am fucking writing the same goddamn thing over and over again. (laughs) Year after year. Next page. (laughs) Like, and I'm making these excuses trying to rationalize this. And it's like. Oh, why am I doing this? Why, <laughs> why am I accepting the bare minimum? I why is that so hard to think that like you don't deserve a text back or like a guy that's interested and like actually interested in you and pursuing you will pursue meaningful conversations with you and not just you know oh sorry you know fell asleep or sorry I'm too busy out on the road here playing these gigs and you know whatever so. Um, Ooh, that was yeah. specific. I, I've dated way too many musicians. It's Nashville. She's like, yep, don't like that. Uh, there's a lot no. of those out there, right? That's yeah. a, that's another red flag. Sorry. Not all Not musicians, but like, you know. <laughs> for, no, for sure. It's very, it's very definitely so. So I have to ask, you've had this mm-hmm. dating history. You've you've gone uh, to therapy and still in therapy, mm-hmm. which is great. I Was that a correct statement? I said that. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to misspeak. No. And then, uh, you know, these dudes suck ass, right? <laughs> Like, what was it that said, you know what, let's give this good old bachelor thing another try. What, what was that? You know, I feel like paradise is so much more conducive to longer lasting relationships in, in the franchise. Um, obviously, I can't speak to Brian. You are married to Rachel and like everything worked out for you guys, but you guys didn't get much time together Really, like when you think about the amount of hours that you get with the lead yeah. before yes. from you're what supposed I hear, to get you, down on one knee. Yeah, from what I hear, you guys get a lot more time. You get a lot more time. Paradise. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're together all the time. You know, you're you're forming relationships with the other girls, with the guys, and you just get more time to to hang out one on one. You know, so um, for that premise you know you're you're spending all this time really getting to know each other hours and days on end you can get like a i feel like it's more plausible that you would get a better jump start on what life could look like in the real world i agree so you were so you were you were hopeful you were hopeful going hopeful. on and like what was was your approach any different from the last time you were on paradise compared to now um Yeah. Uh, Wells was like, listen, D, you're one of my oldest friends. I know you're funny. I know you're sweet. Just fucking let it all out. Okay. Like, don't hold anything back. Just like really be you and have fun this season. Perfect advice. So Is is that not you don't think you acted that way? In the previous season, like were you? Well, no, I was terrified. I was, gotcha. I was in my head. I was like, I work in the NICU. Like, I work with like super premature, sick infants, and then I have their parents in there. And I'm like, if I do something stupid on national TV, and like they're fans and they watch it, and they're like, they see that I'm their nurse, they're gonna be like, sign me up for a new one. <laughs> you know, yeah. I already have like a younger, softer sounding voice, and parents are. 
like, are you sure you're old enough to take care of my, you know, child? And it's like, yes, I have a degree. I've actually been doing this for uh, 15 years. So thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Talk that talk. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, so like, now that we on the Paradise Talk, let's keep it moving. We see Michael A. do what Michael A. hasn't done before on this show. We see what Brian and I continue to talk about because we've hated when the women have said things like, why aren't these guys coming to us? And the answer is always because they don't like you. I'm sorry. It's just the truth. Michael A., <laughs> it's just a, that's a fact. That's not even like an opinion. No, that's it's, a fact. Yeah. Or when no a man likes say. you, they'll pursue you. Exactly. And so we see Michael A. pursue the effing hell out of you, right? He comes he, he straight line. He beeline for you. He's like, you, hey, bro, that's the one for me right beach. there, bro. He's like, that's the one I'm going to grab. <laughs> he literally physically grabs your hand in a respectful manner, right? And was like, hey, we got Very respectful. Walk. Yeah, it was very respectful way. I'm not, you know, people can take things out of context. It was very respectful. But he was like, yo, we about to go walk over here. Yeah, it was, you know? it was a loving embrace. It was a loving yeah, embrace. Yeah, 100%, right? So that really you know the question we're going to ask. What was that prior? What was the lead up prior to you two physically meeting each other? Like I said, in the in the show, we um, had talked prior, like in our DMs. Um, How was that? But, no, but I'm, 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 you got to talk to me like I'm your your... Your your sixteen year old sister, right? Take us okay. inside like, the take DMs. Me, tell me all the take details. Take us inside the DMs. <laughs> tell me all the details. Um, I'm not gonna lie. You know, like I watched him on Katie's season, and his story just really resonated with me. Um, and honestly, at first, I was like, "Oh, here we go. They're just gonna ship the hell out of this. Like, look at this guy. They're gonna be like, oh, well, Danielle lost her fiance, and you know, they should be perfect together just because they have that in common." Um. And I, but like I did, I started following him and um, really, I never really reached out until I'd I'd been thinking about reaching out, but um, he had uh, made a post about Laura for like a, um, I think it was like an anniversary post or something. And it just, it just hit me, you know, that day. And I, I reached out and I was like, hey, um, you know, as someone who's unfortunately part of the same club and in your bachelor world, um, like if you ever you know, need a friend just to kind of chat through things or gets it, gets the overwhelming amount of um, people that are going to message you sharing their stories and how to kind of protect your energy and that too, you know, I'm here, we can chat. Um and it really, it never went any further than just a, you know, hey, what's up? How you doing? Um, we we talked about our stories and, you know, just kind of like checked in on each other. But, um, like, I n- never, <laughs> believe me, that entrance on the, on the beach <laughs> was completely caught me off guard. Like, I had really? no idea he had any sort of crush even on me tell me this danielle i mean because a lot of times like you know you guys were vibing in the dm you know you say it's, there was no flirtation but mm-hmm. it's a little different when you guys meet in person like sometimes the vibe just isn't there even though yeah you may have thought there was something in the dms while you guys were talking but what was 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 that first encounter and as you got to know him a little bit in person was that everything you could have hoped for I was completely flabbergasted. Like, color me Twitter pated. It was insane. I've never heard that word. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, if you what? saw Bambi as a kid, you've heard Twitter pated. Definitely seen Bambi. Well, who remembers Bambi as a kid? I, I was don't born know. Like, it's my brain. <laughs> it's my brain. It it's she weird. Took it back right there. I love your brain. <laughs> she said Bambi. Take it away, back. By the way, they need a lot of action. You know, Bambi. Anyway. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like I, I'm someone I've, uh, I have a ton of guy friends that I've never thought anything could cross that barrier with, um, and honestly, like, <laughs> I'm like thinking back on it and like watching it back, and I'm like, oh my god, you were so nervous, and like, I was so nervous like in meeting him but like there was I just felt so much in that moment I was like oh my god this guy's even more attractive in person than he is on his Instagram and I'm like there's just like this 
like crazy tangible like energy in that moment that was like completely threw me off guard. It was Some it was it was incredible. Explain in words. You just can't explain it. That's beautiful. I love that for you. Um, I really do because I know it's exactly what you mean. Was there any? Anybody else that you were considering, like, hey, I would like to meet this person, this person, this person, maybe because I don't know him personally, but they're cute. Mm-hmm. I mean, shit, he he grabbed her right away. I, do you even <laughs> have a chance? <laughs> he did, but well, yeah, that's a question. I didn't, like, I didn't know anyone else that would be down there. You know, I obviously said some of like the older guys that, um, you know, like bring your guys. I thought uh, Romeo was really cool. Um, like. Casey, just like people that were like older. I mean, like Mike, come on! If you would have been down, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I told Mike. I think the name Michael is great. Um, that's all I'll say. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, of course there was other people that you know it'd be really nice to meet down there. But um, I mean, like, and I talked to other people. I talked to Justin. I talked to James, and um, but it was like that feeling that I had with. Yeah. Michael, I was just like, right. whoa. <laughs> like a liter- it, it was hard. a literal whoa moment. We can so all see it. Let's talk about your date. Like, okay. did any, did any of the other guys. How awkward uh, was that? Oh my God. <laughs> In like the sweetest way, it was so awkward. I, I loved it. We were just like trying to figure it out. Um, But like, we're. You know how it is, like those first date jitters and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And it was so, I thought it was awkward. Everyone else thought it was so sweet. I'm like, well, yeah, it's sweet, but it's like really awkward. <laughs> There's like, I love the honesty in that. Yeah, it was awkward. I'm not going to lie. Could you tell Michael was a bit nervous in, in that like initial conversation that y'all had? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. It was for sure. <laughs> it, it happens it's to the endearing. best of us. Now, right? It was yeah, so you know? endearing. I was like, okay, we're both nervous. We're both awkward. We can be nervous and awkward together, and it's going to be okay. I'm not going to be judged in in this situation. (laughs) Yeah. So how how did it feel to hear Michael talk about Laura? Um, It felt really honest. It felt like it was a space where, like, we could share – equally um about the different um traumas that we had been through in our separate relationships and um our losses are completely different though too you know like with cancer you know not that it makes it any easier but there's there's like more time and easier is the wrong thing to say like there's literally nothing easy about death like if it happens immediately or unexpectedly or you have time to like say goodbye to someone there's nothing easy about that um but like our situations are really different in that um like I found my fiance he died of a drug overdose like it was everything that I had envisioned for um our future was gone instantly and like that was a lot to come back from. Um, and I, obviously I can't speak to, you know, Michael's experience, but um, but just as like, so y'all have like some backstory, like hearing him talk about Laura, it's like, it's like we have that shared thing in common that like you don't want anybody to have in common with you. Like you would never wish that on anybody, but we just got each other. Love that. I had to let that breathe for a second. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. Yeah. That's a, uh, again, completely understand you. You don't want to have this thing in common, but you do. No. And it's yeah. something that, you know, when things happen, like for example, as a male, when something happens to one of my female friends or like a, a woman in my life, uh, that is like related to strictly women. I always say, I'm sorry, I can never imagine, right? And mm-hmm. we all do that despite your gender. But like for you and Michael, you guys may not, you guys may have had your, lost your significant other in different ways, but you know the emotion of that. And I mm-hmm. wanna ask you, well, first off, for anyone that was 
down the two of you, that shit went out the window when we saw that conversation and your vulnerability was absolutely amazing. So thank from you. myself, Brian and all of Bachelor Nation, thank you for that. Yeah. Um, and Michael as well. But take us to that day. How did the conversation shift after you spoke about your fiance, Nick, and his overdosing? Um, it was just great to uh, sit with somebody that gets it and doesn't try and fix it and just lets it Definitely. live there. You know, it's acknowledged. But what's also acknowledged in those moments is like that loss doesn't define the person that we are now because we've both worked really hard to not be the the girl that lost her fiance, the guy that lost his wife. Um, we know that's a part of our stories um, and that's something that we can like relate to and share with people, but it doesn't define the lives that we are creating or the lives that we deserve to still live. Do you, if that makes sense, that makes complete sense to me. If, if I may, have you had thoughts of I'm forgetting this person and like arguments within yourself? And if so, how do you get through that? Not so much forgetting. Um, in my situation, uh, I'm about, 12 years it'll be 12 years this year uh since he passed and i've gone through a lot of um more so guilt feeling than forgetting because i've i'm so grateful for this life that i have now and that i've been able to create and um you know and looking back you learn different like it, I'll just say it, like it wasn't a healthy relationship that I was in with him. You know, it was very codependent. Um, he, I know he, I know he loved me, but it was also, this is going to be hard to say. It's like addicts know how to get what they want when like they need it. Um but they're also struggling with this like disease process that's like completely, you know, all encompassing in their life. Um, and I was made to believe in those situations that like, I was the only person helping him. I was the only person that understood him. I was the only person that could, that he wanted to be a better person for, you know, it just wasn't like, it was a very toxic give and take and being with someone that when they woke up in the afternoon and just poured themselves like a full glass of vodka and like topped it with a little bit of crystal light, you know, wow. it just, it, you can't, like, that's not, I mean, he was, he was very, he was a very explosive person, you know, um, it just wasn't a safe place. So I don't really have, I, I have guilt over feeling that way about someone who can't defend themselves and knowing that like the relationships and that I've built since then, especially with myself, probably wouldn't have happened had this situation not occurred. So there's like this weird guilt that, that you feel. Is Michael like the first man ever since that happened that you've because of your shared experience that you could be able to talk about things like this like openly and yeah. honestly with him and, wow. yeah. compared to others in his past others in your past yeah and not feel like that shame or like oh my god how could you say something like that you know it's like well you don't get it because you haven't been in a situation like this yeah. you know it's, it's a weird it's a really fucking weird balance and and thing to feel like there's there's so much nuance and layers to the grieving process and 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 every relationship is so different that you have with someone who is who has passed that you it just really we just can't you just really can't judge people 
y'all, especially in these situations. That part right there. Uh, yeah. Speaking of Michael, uh, from what Brian was saying, and on a lighter note, Michael has an extremely distinct look. And I'm, what I'm talking about is like the, the goatee, right? Mm -hmm. Just like, I guess this is girl talk. But like, does that get annoying when a guy has like that much facial hair and when we kiss y'all? Michael has a very soft beard. On the beach, he had very soft beard. It really didn't, uh, you just don't really notice it. It was very well groomed. <laughs> so you're so you're very you're well you're, a, you're a beard girl. You like you like the beard on men. I think he specifically looks really good with a beard. Have you seen him um like bare face though? Well yeah, we did on we did on Katie's season. And I was like, oh, okay. uh, I mean he's cute, but you know the, 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 the beard, beard, beard takes it to the, another level. Put, the, put your male makeup back on. <laughs> 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 it's okay. We all know this guy, so you know. Mega. <laughs> uh, so, Danielle, I mean, there was a really beautiful moment. Uh, the line of, from the song that you mentioned. Oh, my gosh. I lit yes. a fire with love you left behind. It was so yes. beautiful. Yes. And, you know, Michael really seemed to relate to it. He had never heard it before. Can you explain a little further of what that line means to you? Um, oh, it was. Music is so powerful. Um, music can like put you in a mood. It can get you out of a mood. It can like, you can just be sitting there driving and you're like, oh my God, I'm feeling this song like everywhere in my body. And that's what I felt the first time I heard Stars by Grace Potter. Um, and that line specifically, she had me hooked immediately. It's the first line in the song. I lit a fire with the love you left behind. And... It just was like, it just fully honored everything that I felt in that moment of like where I was, how far I had come, and like everything I still wanted to do with my life. Mm. And it just really became this mantra, I guess, and like honor um, that I was still able that I didn't choose to, I mean, not that it was a choice. I mean, like after he died, I was very severely depressed, very anxious. I got on medication um, just so, like I could, you know, get through day to day things like full, full proponent of um, antidepressants when you need them correctly prescribed. They're, they're very helpful. Um, and it just really helped honor where I was and everything else that I wanted, that I wanted to do. Um, that, I, I, I don't know if I told Brian this. When I heard you say that, I put that, this is not significant so, but it's just something that I did. I was like, I'm, I had to tweet that. And I, I didn't tweet it, I saved it in my drafts, oh. but it was, that line was like, to me, if Grace is listening, that's tattoo worthy. In my opinion, mm -hmm. that was such a beautiful line. I felt I haven't felt something more since watching the show. Honestly, that um, when you said that, that was thanks, everything buddy. to me personally for personal reasons, but also just in the moment that you two shared. And so I really appreciate you for sharing that. Um, within that same thread, that same sheet of music, speaking of music, mm -hmm. what are some other tools that have been healing methods for you in the grieving process? Excellent question. Um, again, like just speaking to my own personal experience, I had a lot of this like really nervous energy, like a lot of anxiety where like I would just kind of like had this like almost like twitch thing when I would start getting really anxious after he had passed and, um, and like knowing that like a wave of like something was just going to kind of come over me and I had... I was like, well, like, what can I do? I just had this need to like do something or like create something with my hands. And I mean, I had never painted before in my life. And I literally just went to Michael's and um, got like you a like bunch Michaels, of canvases. Right. Well, you I like mean, Michaels. it's a coincidence. It's a very <laughs> common name. Okay. <laughs> it's a chain store. Um, no. <laughs> 
It's like a it had to fore- go foreshadowing a little foreshadowing, bit. Foreshadowing, yeah. <laughs> total foreshadowing of the life of Danielle Maltby. Um, but no, I just got like a bunch of canvases and like paints. And I was like, well, I don't know what I'm going to paint, but I'm just going to move some color around. And it really, it just, it just felt so good. So... I really started to continue to do that, um, paint over different things, um, started to like finally incorporate brushes, you know, and uh, I can't paint. Uh, everything that I've ever done is usually a bit more abstract. It's just more of just moving color in a way that makes me feel something and releases what I have been feeling. Um, so like painting was really, really helpful for me, um, just to kind of release that in a way that, cause like I didn't necessarily have words for how I was, I was feeling, um, journaling when I felt like I could, um, God, my family put up with so much. <laughs> like, in terms of your, um, like in terms of your personality or just the way you're yeah. acting? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because grief takes so many different forms. You're either like extremely sad or you might be like really angry or, you know, easily annoyed or, you know, there'd be like, <laughs> you know, you just kind of like snap and start crying at, at certain things. And I just felt like I was apologizing the whole time. Um, but luckily that kind of faded off after like a year. <laughs> Who's the but person in your family that, you know, had your back the most or was always there for you? Um, God, my whole family. But oh, okay. my younger brother is a freaking rock. Um, I have, um, like, a lot of, like, really good friends and stuff, too, that helped me through. Um, wouldn't let me spend, like, a, a night alone. Um, and then when I moved down to Nashville, there was other friends that I had there and they would come over anytime I needed, or they were really good about being like, Hey D, like, I know you're working or you, you've got a few days off. Make sure you're getting out of the house, making sure you're coming to hang out. And, um, and I just started really, I just really wanted to live, Mm. you know, I, I didn't want to feel so sad and depressed anymore. I just wanted to like live and experience. That's where I was trying to go with, (laughs) with the needing medications. Medications helped me get to that point where, you know, I could start participating as like a little bit closer to myself, um, in the real world. And then, um, just, (laughs) Sorry, this was all things that have helped me heal. Um, this is so much necessary information. I appreciate you, Brian, yeah, does, yeah, talking it out, does. Seriously. Don't even yeah. Very good stuff. <laughs> I just wanted to do things that scared me <clears throat> that I never thought I could do. And it's like all of those things, you know, I... I wanted to get back into dance. So when I moved down to Nashville, I started taking dance classes again. I was like, well, hell, like, I'm really tall. Um, Maybe I can model. So, like, I started um, reaching out to, like, modeling agencies. And, you know, that terrified me because I was like, I've never been in front of a camera before. I've never, like, I don't know how to pose. I don't know how to do this. All while having, you know, continuing to work, like, at the bedside. And, like, all these things just kind of helped A, me learn more about myself, but start seeing myself how other people saw me and start seeing myself as like a beautiful functioning human that could start going out on dates again, could start welcoming, like maybe love in again. So it's been a long process. It's been a long 12 years. <laughs> a long 12 years, but it sounds like you, you've, you've done <clears throat> so much amazing work. I mean, you mentioned so many things in that. Uh, just to say back, you've talked about writing, you talked about painting, uh, you talked mm-hmm. about taking under by a doctor, uh, correct medication, you talked about getting mm-hmm. out there doing things that scare you just so many things. Uh, so a uh, long 12 years, but you can help so many people because you've been through it yourself. So that's amazing. And then we get to see you, you. do awesome stuff on The Bachelor. I, I have to <laughs> ask you, Danielle, what were your thoughts on a the new girls, not the OG girls, the new girls per se. You're, it's funny because like you're in that space to where you're like not one of the OG girls, but not one of the new girls. Like, you know, 
from this season. I know. I'm in the gray area. Yeah, you're like in the gray <laughs> area, right? But like, what was your thought on the split? I was so shocked. I had all these. Um, I didn't watch Clayton season, so like I didn't know anybody down there. That's why when I saw Lace, I was like, oh my god, Lace, someone I know. <laughs> um, I had I had no idea who any of them were. I had heard. Uh, I think the only person I had really heard anything about was Shanae, obviously. And I was like, oh God, is she going to be mean to me? You know, um, and I didn't even realize Brittany was from Matt James's season. And, um, but those two right off the bat were like two of the warmest people I met down there. And I was like, oh my God, you guys are like really kind. I like this. <laughs> um, but those are the only two I had any time to like say hi and okay, I guess I'm going on a date. See you later. <laughs> um, uh, but like the new girls that came down too, um, are amazing. You know, I mean, the one thing I, uh, Bachelor Nation is not short of is really amazing women, um, and men for that matter. I would go to bat for any of the men down on that beach. I stand by that. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. There's some good dudes down there. We, we appreciate um, that because, you know, guys definitely get a bad rap. <laughs> they do. I, I know they do. Um, and that's like a whole other conversation of, yeah, you know, righteous feminism and, yeah, another you know, conversation. Yeah. <laughs> another how, how? conversation. But, um, no, I was so impressed with all the women. Um, Flo is really cool. She's a very cool human and we have not gotten to see too much of her yet. So were you surprised? Like, well, obviously the split happened, um, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I, I feel like you left thinking maybe all those relationships were really strong and then were you surprised by you know the men possibly wanting to pursue things with these new women I'm always shocked <laughs> because it's like I, it's like I forget I like what show I'm on um I have a very torturous relationship with cheating though and so it's like trying to put that in the back of my head of like it's not necessarily cheating that they're doing it but they're exploring these other options and this is like literally the only place on earth that like <laughs> <laughs> exploring to find an actual love connection is okay um so i was again like i had i had like no time to really get to know or like see any of these couples in action before uh, everything was split apart so like how how would you have worked it like you see stories like rodney and lace um mm -hmm. you know jacob and jill like how would like if you were in their shoes shanae trying got, to come back you got split up like how would you handle that situation like hypothetically hypothetically i would be like no, I'm not pursuing anything until I go and I talk and end things with this other person and let them know that this is what I want to do. Why are you slapping a hand down? <laughs> She's like, no, know. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Fair enough. Victoria kind of did that. Like, she definitely liked Alex, but. You know, she was like, yeah, I still got this thing. Well, no, she, she's talking more like she would have been like Serene, where she would have just been, nope, yeah, like Serene. closed okay, for off, sure, for sure, for sure. like not talking to anybody else. Like I'm waiting for Michael back at the beach. For sure. Yeah. For sure. That would have been you. Yeah. I definitely so. Danielle, we could absolutely, not only could we, I would love to and be honored to speak to you more in the future. Uh, yeah. But for today, you know, we got to respect everyone's time. Uh, but before we let you go. <laughs> We would love for you to drop a gem, another gem, because you dropped so many gems yes. in today's episode. I would be honored to. I was thinking about something that really is helping me right now. Um, and like the last couple months of processing things when, you know, you might be feeling really anxious or you feel like these like intrusive thoughts starting to creep in. Um, ask yourself what do you know to be true? Like if you're if you're feeling like you're starting to spiral or feeling really anxious, what do you know to be true? And like focus on that. Write it down. Start like listing things that you know are true. The sky is blue. I have family that loves me. I have really great friends. I you know when when like those negative thoughts are starting to to Pretty enter. Bad. Pilot. Just really yeah. Really try to remind yourself of what do you know is true. That's a great one. 
So true. So many people could use that, myself included. That. Thank you for that. Gratitude. Yeah, baby. of course. Absolutely. Well, Danielle, we can't wait to see your love unfold, specifically with Michael, because I know I've never met a Michael that I don't like. So I cannot <laughs> wait to see y'all's love unfold on the beach and just what you have in the future. Please uh, do shout out your podcast right quick before we let you go. Yeah, um, I have a podcast. It's called The WOMED. Um, you can find us anywhere that you listen to podcasts. You can find us on Instagram at The WOMED, W-O-M-E-D. Um, we're everywhere, and we talk about a lot of a lot of great stuff affecting um, women in healthcare, those who identify as women, members of the LGBTQ populations, um, and just really trying to uplift the voices of everyone doing such amazing work in healthcare and trying to change it and make it better for us for the future. Amen. Awesome. awesome Thank you so awesome, much for awesome. being here, Danielle. Thanks Love for having, having me, guys. No, it's great to have you on. Your energy is contagious and awesome. But you have a great one. Oh, thank Take you. Care. Brian, what were your thoughts, man? Uh no, super vulnerable, honest. Um, you know, I can't even imagine you know, what she's gone through, what Michael's gone through. But at the end of the day, you know, you know, even with all the drama with Sierra, you know, I have my feelings on that, but it's like, it's like just too perfect. You know what I mean? It's like, I she's, get it. Yeah, she, It's like, great. I get it for them. Like yeah, they were like, me they're like meant to be like, just having that, you know, past traumatic experience in common and just, being able to lean on each other and just be there for each other when, you know, and then understanding each other. Cause that was huge. Like we asked her, had she ever, you know, been Dated able to, somebody that has, yeah, 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 that was able to relate, you know, I mean, it's, you know, you, you, you just can't find that person. And when you do, it's just, it just makes things I'm sure a lot easier, you know Not what I mean? For sure. Definitely uh, and so. it just provides a shoulder to, to lean on. Definitely. So I love, I'm a huge advocate of, not only allow me to hear you and listen to your vulnerability and your story, but more so the the actionable items that I could take and or someone listening could take forward. And Danielle provided so many. I mean, she was talking about um, going to therapy. She was talking about writing in a journal. She was talking about doing things that make her nervous. Painting. She was talking about painting. She was talking about listening to music. She was talking about uh, taking prescribed uh, medication to help for a certain period of time under a doctor's uh, orders. All those different things is what I be talking about when it comes Having to like, how to, like what are the exact steps in order for me to get through? Because yeah. I d can't imagine. Yeah, being not, not to mention, you know, she talked about her support system, friends, family, yes. her brother. Her younger brother, you know, yes. Moving to Nashville, having there. a support system there. So you know, matter of fact, huge. today I want to salute to all the people that are there in the shadows for someone that is going through it underneath the sun. So like shout out to all those individuals yeah. right there. We love y'all. Absolutely. And just thank you to Danielle for being here. And and guys, make sure to tune in to Bachelor in Paradise next Monday and Tuesday at 8 p.m. on ABC or stream it on Hulu. And to everybody who listened to this episode, we thank you. We love you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Oh, definitely so. Uh, shout out to all of the guests that we've had. You know. Brian, I think we owe ourselves a pat on the back. A lot of people say that we're great uh, hosts, and we've gotten a lot better, a lot, yes, lot, absolutely. lot, lot we've come, better. Come a long go. way, Michael. We've come uh, a long still, way. so much further to go. Uh, but you know, we always love to hear your opinions, your stories, your insight. So please don't forget to like, comment, follow, message us on social at Talking Out B as in Bachelor, N as in Nation on IG. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. Listen to us on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcast. And baby, I ain't got to tell you no more. Before you DM Danielle, make sure you hit that subscribe. We love y'all.